If you've ever opened up Amazon Cognito and felt overwhelmed by all the settings, you are not alone. Setting up user pools can feel confusing, but once you understand the options, it's actually pretty straightforward. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Amazon Cognito user pool step by step, and just as importantly, we'll go through the different settings you need to understand before using them in your apps. By the end, you will not only know how to create a user pool, but also how to configure it the right way for authentication in your applications. Whether you are new to AWS or just need a refresher on Cognito, this guide will make it simple and easy to follow. So let's jump right in. In order to authenticate users in our application, we will need three things. User pool, this is basically a user directory, managed login, and client application. Back in the days, you had to set them up separately. Nowadays, we can set them up in one go. I am in AWS console in Amazon Cognito section. Let's create user pool. We are prompted with a screen where we can set up resources for our application. And Cognito asks us to define the application. It can be a traditional web application, single page application, or spa, mobile app, and machine to machine application. The name of the application, let's call it React Router Cognito Auth. Next, we need to select an option for a sign in identities in configure option section. You can have select email, phone number, or username, or you can select two of them or uh, one of them. We will just select email. Also, we have a drop down to select the required attributes for sign up, and you can present it with a lot of these default attributes where you can put address, birthday, email, family name phone nub, number, etc. So, but for our purposes, we will just select a name changed after the app has been created. Finally, let's add a return URL. It's also known as a callback URL. That's where Cognito will redirect uh, to this URL with a code, right? And we will provide this HTTP local host running on the port 5173 and it's going to be auth callback the route we're going to create. And later on, we can actually update uh, this URL or you can add more callback URLs. Now let's click on create user directory and we're basically all set. That's how easy you can create a Amazon Cognito for your uh, application authentication. Right, so here you have a few sections where it asks you to check the login page, which you can click and to see your login page right here. Uh, what else you can do is you can also build authentication component and it gives you a quick setup guide. However, we're not going to use that. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the very bottom and click go to overview. This page provides you an overview of the user pool, gives you the basic user pool name, user pool ID, and ARN. It also have a token signing uh, key URL, which is basically a well-known URL. So if you click on it, it's going to give you um, the keys, right, that you can use when validating the token uh, that comes from Amazon Cognito. On the left-hand side, let's click on App Clients under the application. So we have one client right here that we named React Cognito Auth. So let's click into this app client and we can see the client information and we have client ID and client secret that we're going to be using later. Also, we have information about authentication flow duration. It's about three minutes. Refresh token will expire in five days and access token expires in 60 minutes and ID token is also will also expire in 60 minutes. We can click on edit button here to edit uh, app client information. Here you can update your app client name and choose other authentication flows, but we keep the authentication flows as is. We also have uh, authentication flow session duration here. You can change refresh token expiration, right? Your refresh token can leave up to 10 years, but obviously you're going to choose whichever time makes sense for your application. Also, you can update the access token and ID token expiration time. Let's go ahead and cancel out of it. Besides the quick setup guide, you also have a tab with attribute permissions and it tells you what attribute 
permissions you your application basically have you can read all these attributes and write to them except for email verified so this cognito will actually write to this when email is verified the next step is login pages and this is a managed login pages configuration so it has uh, allowed callback urls here it lists what's your identity provider what kind of grant types you have and what scopes for open id connect this is actually a pretty important page so you can click on edit and right here you know you can update your callback url if you made a typo or you can add another url if you like right if you have multiple callback urls uh, you can also add allowed sign out url if you wish and then here in identity providers you can select your identity providers currently our identity provider is Cognito User Pool. Later, when we configure uh, Google, the Google will be also listed as an identity provider and we can select that. The next thing we have is OAuth grant types. Currently, the authorization code grant type is selected, but you can have implicit grant and client credentials. Implicit grant is not very secure anymore and client credentials you will select when you are creating machine-to-machine -machine app or you will need uh, machine to machine token that uh, can be used for background processes. Next, we have OpenID scopes right here. So, this is basically what information will be contained in the ID token. So, it's going to have an email. There is also scope OpenID and the phone. We actually do not have phone, so we can remove that. However, what we after is actually this profile, right? This will give us the name of the user. So, we want to select the profile right here. So, now our scopes include email, OpenID, and profile. And finally, you can also uh, add your custom scopes however no custom scopes are configured so you cannot select anything let's go ahead and click on save changes so besides uh, login pages there is also threat protection tab where you can configure threat protection and analytics where you can configure your analytics Next on the left hand side under user management, let's click on users and this is basically your user directory right so you will create or your application will create the users right and then you know verify the email and it will show you confirmation status and status of the user you can also use user import if you are migrating to amazon cognito you can have a csv uh, list of the users that you can import under user management there is also groups so you can basically create groups and add users to them and groups can be used to add permissions to the access tokens for multiple users next let's click on authentication methods under authentication and here you can have an email section so currently your email provider is sending emails with a cognito however when you go live right you will need to configure your SES, right? Simple email service. And here, if you click on edit, you basically can select your SES and then you need to uh, put the from email configuration set, right? And reply to email. But now we're just using um, our Cognito in development and we can just send the emails with Cognito. For example, when a user requests uh, to create, a, to change a password or they forgot a password. Let's go ahead and cancel out. The next section is SMS, so you can also configure your SMS. And if you have a phone number, right, if you collect the phone number from your users, uh, under SMS, you also have a password policy. You can click on edit as well. And here you can change what kind of requirements you uh, ask user for their password, right? There's a, usually keep it cognito default. It's, it's pretty good and pretty secure. And then, you know, if you choose custom you can actually change uh, requirements for the passwords so let's go ahead and cancel out of here and finally you have a section of a pass key it's a little bit out of scope of this tutorial so but you can here edit a uh, pass key configuration as well next let's click on sign in under authentication and you can see right here um sign in page so you have a cognito user pool as a sign in option the next uh, card tells you about options for choice based signing if you can click edit uh, you can see that you can choose available options right you can have 
email message one time password or SMS message one time password, or you can choose the pass key. The next card is says multi-factor authentication. Uh, currently there are no MFA selected. Let's click edit. So here we can actually select require MFA because we want to have multi-factor authentication for our login. And then we can just select what we want to use. Normally most people use authentication apps nowadays. So let's select authenticator app. Go ahead and save changes. The next card is device tracking. If you click in there, you can either user opt in for the device tracking, right? So they can opt in for it. You can select it or you can have it always remember uh, device tracking. And this can be used for multi-factor authentication. So the user don't have uh, enter the multi-factor authentication code if the device is remembered. Uh, for our purposes, let's just keep uh, don't remember user device and cancel out. Finally, you have a user account recovery card. Here you also can edit the recovery methods. Currently we have a self-service account recovery and we use email is if available, otherwise SMS. Next, let's go to sign up under authentication and you have the sign up information here. The first card talks about attribute verification and user account confirmation. If you click on it, right, we can see that we have email message to verify email address. However, you can select SMS message if you want to verify phone number. Let's go ahead and cancel out of here. Uh, the next card is required attributes, right? But we cannot change it. This was the warning that Cognito gave us when we were creating user pool. Also, you can add a, your own custom attributes on the next card here. It's called custom attributes. As you see, saw, there were a lot of, you know, attributes that Cognito provides out of the box. However, if you want to create your own custom attributes, you can add them here. And finally, you have a self-service sign up card. So let's go ahead and click edit. Currently self registration is enabled. However, if for some reason you don't want users to be able to sign up, only log in. You can disable it here by unchecking enable self registration. Let's go ahead and cancel out here and we'll go to the next page that is called social and external providers. On this page, you can add more identity providers. Currently, uh, user pool is our identity provider, but you can also add a different ones like a social identity provider, Google or Facebook. Then you can also sign in with Amazon and Apple. You can use SAML or OpenID Connect. So later on, we're going to be configuring Google, but the way the Cognito works, it's basically uses Google as OpenID Connect. Google provides the information in ID token, and then Cognito actually remaps Google token into its own token and kind of there is a middleman so you don't have to uh, have a logic in your application to check well it's an id token from google then i you know do this if it's from my cognito user pool i do that right cognito kind of takes out this work you know and just provides you a uniform token no matter which um, identity provider user chooses to sign up with the next page here is called extensions if you go here you can configure your lambda triggers so uh, Lambda triggers are pretty useful, right? So you can use Lambda trigger when user signs up to check certain information and maybe add it to the user attributes or when user signs in, right? You can basically look up if the user is admin and you can change uh, scopes in your token, ID token or access token on the fly with this Lambda functions. So these Lambda triggers are pretty useful. Uh, let's go ahead and cancel out here. Um, the next uh, section is security. You can use AWS WAF or web application firewall. For example, if you're using machine to machine tokens, right? So you don't want users to constantly request those tokens and they cost money, cost you money. Cognito will charge it for you. So you can basically put a rate limiting here, right? And you can enable WAF, which is actually recommended, but we are just going to keep uh, use WAF with your user pool unchecked right here. The next uh, page under security is, is threat protection, right? You can actually enable threat protection, but for that you need to have a plus plan. Currently we are on the lowest plan. 
And uh, finally, here in the security, you have a log streaming. Again, for log streaming, you will need to have a plus plan. Next, we have a branding section, right? Let's click on the domain under the branding section. And here we have the domain configuration and we have this cognito domain. That's where you look for a cognito domain if you need it for your application or you will need it, for example, to have a Google authentication to configure it. Then that's where you can use your domain. Uh, we can actually have some action here. You can edit your cognito domain and branding. Before managed login, there used to be such thing as hosted UI. Now it's kind of classic and basically Cognito will probably deprecate it. So always have it under managed login selected here. Besides out of the box Cognito domain, you can also create a custom domain. And here, yeah, you can put your own domain. So user won't even know that they redirected to a different place to enter their credentials. Obviously for that, you will also need a certificate manager right here to configure your domain. So let's go ahead and cancel out of here. Finally, you have a section for a resource servers and resource server is a remote server that authorizes access based on auth2 scopes and access tokens. So basically that's the section where you configure your scopes right so if you have a custom scopes you can configure them here and then select them in your app client where we so selecting custom scope section under branding we also have a managed login page and that's where you can update styles you know configure basically your managed login so it looks exactly like your other application so visually user won't tell the difference besides styling your Manage login. You can also add terms documents, which are basically end user consent documents. And the links to these documents will be displayed when user is signing up. Next, under the branding, we have a message templates page, and that's where you can create your templates for verification message, invitation message, or multi factor authentication message. Right? You can just click and edit them so you have consistent branding. So the final section here is settings. You can check uh, feature plans right here. Currently we are on the essentials plan, but there is also a plus plan. Obviously we'll have to pay more for that, but essentials is just pretty basic, but it also gives you a lot of functionality right here, as you can see. The next page under settings is tags. So you can uh, add tags to your Cognito and then obviously have a deletion protection here. Uh, currently we activated deletion protection or it is activated by default for us. So in case someone tries to delete the user pool, so it won't allow to do it, but you can deactivate deletion protection from here. That's it. Now you know how to set up and configure Amazon Cognito user pools for authentication, but we are not stopping here. In the next video, I'll show you how to take this even further by adding authentication to a React app, including MFA and social login with providers like Google and Facebook. So go ahead and click on that video right here and I'll see you there.